Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike, and today we're talking about The Faculty. Guaranteed to jack you up. I'm so excited to talk about this. I love this. It's one of my favorite post-screen movies that came out of the 90s Dimension era, the late 90s Dimension Films era, and it's just fun. It's got an amazing cast directed by Robert Rodriguez, written by, as we just found out, Scream director, Scream 7 director, get it up, baby, Kevin Williamson, which I'm super pumped about. Obviously, the story of how this script came to be for Kevin Williamson is interesting in itself. He wasn't the first person to put hands on or create this script. That all involves the Weinsteins and Dimension films and all that too. But today, the script that we're going to go through as well is the first draft of that script from Kevin Williamson and the many, many differences in it that came from this first draft that was dated 1-5-1998 to the movie that we finally saw in 1999. But first I want to thank our sponsor today, IP Vanish. I have been using them and it's so easy just to one click, you are on an IP address in New Zealand. Look, I'm in New Zealand. You can go from New Zealand to Cincinnati, from Cincinnati to Canada. Hi, I'm in Canada to Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. And we all know this day and age, VPNs are really important to protect your privacy online. And IP Vanish is one of the easiest, simplest ones that you can use. And when spring and summer coming up, everyone's planning their beach vacations and things like that. You don't want to be in a situation where you're at the hotel. Maybe you get a few minutes, you're looking at some stuff, having a good time, someone snooping on you. You definitely don't want that, especially our listeners. That I know. So in that case, protect your privacy with IP Vanish and protect your wallet with a 30 day money back guarantee. So as Jennifer Love Hewitt, and I know what she did last summer, would say, what are you waiting for? To get a great deal on a yearly plan and great savings with IP Vanish, check out our specific link, ipvanish.com forward slash we watched a movie, or click it in the link down below right now to check out IP Vanish for yourself. So the story of the faculty goes like this. Kevin Williamson wrote it, yes, and he's probably the name that you remember, but before that, guys named Bruce Kimmel and David Wechter actually wrote a script called The Feelers that it appeared nobody wanted, and then Scream came out. It changed everything. Dimension started putting out feelers for scripts like this, a science fiction alien movie that involved teenagers and hip kids in high school, the perfect Kevin Williamson video. Now, at this time in 98, the cast wasn't a bunch of big names, even though they are to us now, and this cast is loaded with no Noble names and people, and some of them with really bad goatees. I'm looking at you, John Stort and Shooter McGavin. They brought in Kevin Williamson and had him rewrite the script, but Dimension had a problem. They wanted Kevin Williamson to be the name that marketed the movie. They wanted to say, the guy who wrote Scream brought you the faculty. From Kevin Williamson, the writer of Scream and Scream 2. And the other two guys were cool enough with it to take money to take a lesser credit and take a back seat in it, to which they said they thought about doing arbitration, but when they read Kevin Williamson's script, they decided that he had changed enough that the arbitration could go either way, and they said, hey, you get your name on the credits, but you guys put my kids through college. Win-win. And by the way, I don't know how many script drafts came after this first one. This one's dated to 1998. The movie came out in 99. It's literally listed as the ke first Kevin Williamson draft. So there are quite a few major changes in this. I don't know how many of those were made in a second draft or how many of those were made by Richard Rodriguez or why they were filming or what. I just know this is the first one that Kevin Williamson put his fingers all in, over, all over, in and over, because you have to turn the pages. And as we go through this, we'll talk about which part was better, the script's original version or the movie's original version in the movie's original version it opens up and it is robert patrick going absolute ape shit on everybody and just being hilarious in the script itself there's none of that he starts fiddling with the sprinkler and then just pulls up something out of the grass and is like hmm what is this and then the movie starts the first opening kill is completely different as well because in the script it's miss olsen who's in the library with the candlestick and the coach shows up just the same way but everything unfolds differently here he goes up to the giant paper cutter thing and he tries to grab her and he tries to shove her head in it and kill her that way but she presses the b button and madden spin moves away from him and there's a chase scene down a long corridor in the library and there's this whole meta sub thing where she She's singing Madonna up until the point that it happens. And he's like, what is that? What are you singing? Because, you know, he's an alien. And then as he's chasing her, he actually starts singing the, the words to like a version that she was singing, trying to replicate it. But it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger being like rubber baby buggy bumpers. It just doesn't seem right. But I guess there was probably an issue with Madonna or like the rights to being able to say those lyrics because that did not make the movie. But that was in here. Anyway, she ends up down a long corridor in a library. And instead of what happens in the movie, which you guys remember that really cool scene where he's chasing her down blowing his whistle this is hilarious by the way oh. 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 robert patrick just 
ate the shit out of this entire role. And and there's something that the script can't do that he elevates. Nobody can Robert Patrick crazy fuckle doodle do the way that Robert Patrick crazy fuckle doodle do's. I'll tell you that right now. And this shows that. Anyways, and this time she runs down a long corridor. Instead of that whole cool scene happening, it's still a cool scene. It's well written, but it's just not the same. She's walking and a hand comes out from behind the books, grabs her and yanks her back into the books and they're screaming, but then the library goes quiet and that's the end of the scene there. The big introduction scene of the students is pretty much the same in the script. I mean, you had to tell that that was full on Kevin Williamson type of writing right there. There's a new character is one of the main things about this. She's a, a brand new character that's in the script, not in the movie. Her name is Molly and she's a sweet girl who Elijah Wood character, Casey, who is actually Pacey in the script, which is funny because obviously Kevin Williamson did Dawson's Creek. He gets picked on all the time, but she's super sweet to him and just a character that's not in the movie whatsoever. And the reason for that is in the script, there is nothing about Pacey and Jordana Brewster's character Delilah flirting or getting together at the end of the movie none of those things happen between them the whole bus scene where she's like you know you want me come get it none of that stuff happened as a matter of fact Delilah's character gets killed off in the garage scene when they're all you know hitting the guaranteed to jack you up sticks my own recipe guaranteed to jack you up in the movie, she hits the thing and then it becomes apparent that she is the thing and then she runs off and escapes and there's a whole other scenes with Jordana Brewster's character. In the original script, Delilah dies right there. She's shown to be the thing and then they shoot her square in the face. It's a gnarly scene where she grows another head and all this stuff happens, but she ends up with her face blown up on the floor, deader than shit in Zeke's parentless garage. And on this one, I'm siding with the script. I actually thought that the end of the movie starts to get a little long in the tooth and there's stuff unfolding and you're like all right and we didn't need all the extra delilah stuff i feel like i bet what happened is they just really liked delilah and they were like that could be our new jennifer love hewitt that could be our new nev campbell and the producers probably a weinstein's thing and i'm just guessing here we're probably like no you need to put her in the movie more and you need to make her the love interest and have her be one of the good guys at the end because as you know in the movie her and elijah would hook up there's all this weird supposed sex chemistry between the two of them and then they walk off into the sun sunset in the script version though he walks off with molly at the end of the at the end of the movie and they're together forever never apart together forever and never apart i apologize to everyone La, 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 la. Another huge difference between the script and the movie is Josh Hartnett's character Zeke completely different in the script. He was way more of a dick in the script than he was in the movie. And again, I bet this is a thing that has to do with the studios that were probably like, no, he's hot. He's cool. He's Josh Hartnett. He needs a haircut. He needs to be in the movie more and we can't make him such a prick because in the script, he goes up in one scene to Elijah Wood's character, Pacey in particular, and just is bullying the crap out of him. He grabs him by the neck and squeezes his neck and he slams him and he tells him, you're going to go over there for me and you're going to, you see that girl that's not wearing a bra, you're going to go over there and you're going to rip off her sweater and expose her tits to everybody. And he's like, please don't make me do this. And he forces him to. And he's like, there's always a choice. And he's like squeezing his neck. He's a huge prick and i mean he was a prick in the first half of the movie as well for sure but here it's way more apparent so pacey does it because he's forced to he rips off the girl's shirt and literally assaults her and then there's an extra scene in the script that's also not in the movie where they get their revenge on him for doing that they grab pacey they carry him out they rip his underwear off and they take polaroids with him and then post pictures of him and call him you know little penis and shit like that all over the school so pacey's going through a little bit more here in the script than he was going through in the actual movie and zeke was a way bigger dick his relationship with Miss Harper is a little bit different in the script as well. And one of the main things you'll notice if you read this script and watch the movie at the same time, a lot of the same things happen, but everything is disoriented. Like in the movie, everything is in a different place and time in the film. And I don't know if they did that in the editing bay because they wanted the movie to go faster because they know us kids. Well, at the time, obviously, you don't know my age. Shut up. They wanted the teenagers in their in our ADD. I still have that thing going on for me. I still have the ADD clearly because now I'm talking. What were we talking about? bunny rabbits biscuits limp biscuits shit i think they change it all around in editing to make it flow faster i think it flows fine in the script as well but yeah things happen in different places different rooms all that stuff changes but you'll notice that i'd say 87 percent of the script still happens in the movie a little bit different stuff going on with miss harper 
Famke Jansen's character, but it's it's all along pretty much the same lines at the end of the day. How you doing, Miss Harper? Good. We gonna let me fuck Miss Parker. What'd you say, honey? Another big difference, the character of Stan, played by Sean Hattesey, the jock who wanted to, to be normal and like everybody else. I, he was great in the script, the character was, and he was great in the movie. I thought that was a really well done, interesting character that had a little bit more depth to him than a lot of these movies usually do. I liked that guy a lot, and it was cool with him and Stokely's relationship and how all that, that was going on. I dug it. A big difference here is in the big scene where he goes out after they kill the principal and he goes out to see if it stopped this entire thing. I always thought it was really dumb in the movie because he goes out to see if the coach has changed, right? But you can see from far away, even in the rain, that the coach is standing out there just like eating up the like plants versus zombies, just like eating up the rain. And he's got all of his tendrils, you know, hanging out from him like sour patch strings, just sucking up the rain. It's very clear that this guy's still a fucking alien, right? But he, instead of just stopping, he runs up and gets two feet from him and goes, hey coach, while the things are dangling out of his face, he's like, you all right? Did we stop it or what? Okay then, I'll just go fuck myself and die, literally. But in the movie, there's a scene where he returns, he has the he has the drugs and he turns him upside down. And you've got that hilarious scene where Josh Hartnett like goes to high pitch and he's like, you want some pain? Come in here and I'll show you some fucking pain. And I always thought that scene was good, but it reminded me of him in H2O when he's like, how about not for you? What? How I am not responsible for you. Anyways, that scene doesn't happen in the script. In the script, he goes out there, the coach chases him, and he comes right back in. He dies in a completely different way. But in the script, it's pretty cool. When the monster shows herself to be Mary Beth and, and is all large or whatever, he's standing there talking to somebody. They turn away and then they turn back and he's gone. And the thing had picked him up and it just drops him. Stan just disappears and then all of a sudden his body just goes from the rafters because the thing picked him up and dropped him on his face. Deader than shit. And that's a pretty cool death scene that would have been pretty cool in the movie. The movie also takes some of Zeke's like angry and mean shenanigans and replaces them with cheeky and fun shenanigans. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. And that's where some of the other scenes of him doing stuff like selling Nev Campbell porn out of the back of his car to other kids comes from. I think they were trying to make him like a likable bad guy, not like fucking prick bad guy. There's also no scene where Famke Jansen's character comes up and just dresses him the fuck down in the actual script. That's only in the movie. And I figure they probably just wanted to amp up her character because she's so damn good. Stokely has a huge body horror scene that I swear to God, I remember watching this. I swear, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so mad if someone's like, that was actually in the movie because I just watched it and I swear to God it wasn't there, but I remember it, I swear. But there's a scene with Stokely where she's at her locker and one of the things jumps inside of her sleeve and it's crawling all through her and she's freaking out and her friends help try to catch it as it makes its way through her body and eventually they get it by pulling it out of her tear duct right in her eye and it's a gnarly cool body horror scene that seems really cool in the script that i swear to god i remember but i'm pretty sure it's not in the movie but yeah mary beth is still the giant booger monster and that still goes down the exact same way a lot of the dialogue in the movie is literally verbatim word for word in the script though they never tell you hey zeke's happy and he's playing football and smoking ciggies on the field while he's banging one of his teachers i mean that's such a weird scene in the movie that's actually not in the script at all but you you got the sense that they're like okay people are going to want to know where josh hartnett is Pacey goes up to Molly and some girl's like, dang, he's so hot. So you get the idea he's super popular now, but he has his girlfriend and they just kind of walk off together in the sunset and the script's kind of like, I guess the other characters are cool. But that is the major differences between the first draft and the movie. I think I'm definitely going to say that I appreciate the movie more. One of the major problems with the faculty that kept it, I think, from being a classic like Scream, as good as it is and as much as it hits so many of those same beats from Marcus Beltrami's score to everything else to the soundtrack, which is great is that the the special effects were so dated and really, really bad towards the end of that movie. They had some great practical effects, but whenever they had to do the, the CG, it just looked like John Carpenter's Escape from L.A. You know how bad that some of that CG looked at that time? It looked like that a lot in this movie, and it really took you right out of the film for sure in those moments. And again, the end just like kind of drags on. So I do appreciate those in the script. When you can make it up with your own mind's eye, it's a lot scarier in those moments. But I will take the movie over this script for the things I mentioned before and the fact that Robert Rodriguez just adds an entire layer of fun to this that wouldn't have been there before. And that's nothing, I'm not taking anything at all away from Kevin Williamson's script. Like he can get inside the minds of teenagers and write for them like nobody's business. It's crazy, which makes me wonder if why if he's not like, I actually would like to direct Scream 7 because 
I'm kind of done doing that. Let me take what you did, Guy Busick, which apparently it's must be pretty awesome if they didn't even ask Kevin Williamson to touch it. And they said, let me just direct it because I know the DNA of Scream. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. But Robert Rodriguez took what he did, and I just think their, their styles actually mixed really well together. But you throw in Robert Patrick and some of the crazy stuff he was doing that just wouldn't have been that special if you didn't cast the right people. And the cast in this movie is amazing. From top to bottom, even the small roles. The fun cast, it's a fun movie, it's fun direction, fun writing. I love the movie, and those are the differences between the first script and what happened. Comment down below, what do you guys think from what you heard? Which one do you like more? I love your freaking faces, and don't forget to check out IP Vanish in the link below. I hope you guys have an amazing day. You mean shenanigans? No! Oh. You're talking about shenanigans, right? Put those away! Hello, listener. Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite scary movie? Well, Jay and Mike like scary movies, too. You should go and subscribe to their podcast. We watched a movie. Because if you don't, I'll gut you like a... Well, I think you get the idea. Enjoy yourselves while you still can.